They've got David Parsons all the way from Dallas, Texas. Come on in, y'all. <laughs> hey! Woo! Thanks, Jareth. Nice job, Blake. It's wonderful to be part of this day-long celebration of uh, jokes. So, um, I'm the kind of guy who always makes New Year's resolutions, and I pretty much always suck at keeping them. But this year, I've done really well. Uh, my first resolution this year was to improve my work-life balance and spend more time with my family. Well, I fucking nailed that, thanks to the um, uh, global pandemic. Uh, my second was to walk more places so that I could reduce my carbon footprint and um, uh, get more exercise. And I'm pleased to announce that I've walked up the stairs to my home office every single day of the lockdown. Uh, my, my, my third one I haven't done so well at. It was to eat less and lose some weight. Um, but I think I got a little uh, kick up the ass from a, a good place the other day. I got on the scales and got the error message, please only weigh one person at a time. So I'm going to be working on that one a bit better. Okay. <laughs> I don't get all this fuss about wearing masks. I saw a video of a woman the other day claiming that she didn't wear masks for the same reason she didn't wear panties, because shit needs to breathe. Well, um, <laughs> with a mask, much like with undergarments, it's less about keeping stuff out than keeping the noxious stuff you emit in. So lady, panty up, please. Um, but, but people are really riled up about forcing uh, people to wear masks as an infringement on their constitutional rights. Well, I looked at the Constitution. I can see the right to bear arms in there, but there's nothing about the right to bear teeth. So I don't know what their problem is. Um, and, and I'm just glad people aren't expanding this to other endeavors. Take skydiving, for example. Um, I'm not going to I'm going to jump out of this plane. You can't make me wear a parachute. Oh, so science suggests it would be safer if I used a piece of cloth to break my fall. Well, I have Jesus to protect me. I'm a patriotic American and you can't make me wear a parachute. I'm not going to live in fear. Make skydiving great again. <laughs> well, um, I have a solution. Everybody needs to pretend they're nine. When I was nine, I would have given anything to be able to wear a mask all day. You know, get a black one and be a ninja. Get a webbed one and be <laughs> Spider-Man. Get like a yeah. knotted handkerchief and a hat and be a cowboy. Every day could be a little adventure. Well, every day is a little adventure anymore, isn't it? Okay. Well, while we're on the subject of people wearing masks, I'm in my mid-40s and I had a very special experience at my last annual physical. Uh, when a man hits a certain age, he has to get his prostate checked out. Uh, the medical name for this is a digital rectal exam, but that's just a fancy word for a gloved finger up your poop chute. Uh, <laughs> not just a quick in and out. No, the doctor has to root around in there to check the size and shape of the prostate. Don't get me wrong, under the right circumstances, I like an anal fingering as much as the next guy. Yeah. But uh, you've got to work up to the heavy stuff. Uh, a couple of glasses of wine, some mood lighting, a little soft jazz. And uh, take off the lab coat and wave the damn copay. <laughs> when I got to the, uh, the appointment, I, I, my doctor was said to me, he's like, do you want a prostate exam? I'm like, uh, is it optional? He's like, yeah, there's a blood test I can do. I'm like, well, do you get a prostate exam? He's like, no, uh-uh. He doesn't let his doctor go down the chocolate highway. So um, I... I left very happy but i was wondering you know why the hell do doctors do this if it's not required i mean is it some kind of dominance thing is it like weird sexual satisfaction anyway it was that was one um <laughs> milestone i was quite happy to miss okay so by now you've probably picked up on the merest trace of an accent i live in dallas texas but i wasn't born here um i was born in england and moved here 20 years ago and although both of my countries speak English, kind of, uh, words in America sometimes have different meanings, and this can cause serious confusion. Uh, I got some examples for you. In America, a uh, fanny is slang for buttocks. In England, a fanny is a vagina. You can imagine my confusion when an American friend said, gee, I went on a long bike ride yesterday, and my fanny's still sore. <laughs> uh, uh, how, how the uh, hell were you sitting on the saddle lady 
<laughs> Staying on the subject of genitals, uh, to the English, beavers aren't remotely sexual. In fact, the youngest Girl Scouts are called Beaver Scouts and are led by a grey beaver. Please, sir, would you like to buy some beaver cookies? Not really, no. <laughs> uh, in England, rubbers are used to erase pencil marks. Not here, which explains the strange look I got when, before a test in college, I told an American classmate that I didn't have a rubber and asked if she had a spare I could borrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? I said. I, I'm just trying to prevent myself from making a mistake I'll pay for later. <laughs> Man, that, that slap around the face still stings. In England, my favorite dessert has a very odd name. Uh, to the English, uh, spotted dick is a delicious raisin cake served warm with custard. To Americans, a spotted dick is an excellent reason to see your physician immediately. <laughs> and, and this one's the worst. Uh, to the Eng uh, American use of the word spunk makes me positively queasy. In America, spunk is courage and determination. In England, spunk is slang for semen. I have a... Okay. But wait, but wait. I have a friend who says her 14-year-old daughter is full of spunk. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> okay. Uh, what else have I got for you? All right. Yeah, I know. Full of spunk. No, she's not. You're a terrible mother, lady. You're a terrible mother. Okay. I think I might be an asshole because I've started to hate my cat. Okay, we've had Max since he was a kitten, but he just turned 16, which is about 90 in cat years. And he's a little bit senile. I love the little furball, but he's a nightmare to live with. For about 15 minutes a day, he wants to cuddle. But other than that, it's like living with a constantly drunk roommate. He sleeps all day and he prowls at night. Max, what's this soggy mess I just stepped in? Hey, dude. I got this mouse and I thought you might want half. It's really delicious. <laughs> Max, did you puke in my shoes again? Oops, I think I had a drink too many. Better out than in, right? <laughs> Max, for fuck's sake, stop pissing on the bed. Oh, sorry, I thought this was the bathroom. You know I love you, right? You're my best friend. Well, we took him to the vets the other day and, uh, you know, for his checkup and they wanted to do some blood tests. And uh, when we got the results, uh, I I'm not embarrassed to admit I sat down and I cried a little bit. There's nothing wrong with a little asshole and we'll probably have him for another three or four years. <laughs> okay, I got time for one more. Um, I'm depressed by the state of politics in 2020. It's just, it, you've got a president that, that seems to be getting crazier by the day. Uh, you've got um, Joe Biden on the other side. Uh, and I think that this country deserves better. I'm a proud American citizen. I'm naturalized. Uh, I think this country is ready for and deserves the first female president. Who's with me? It's going to be me. Woo! Ah, well, i got the perfect candidate for you. Meghan Markle is a free agent. <laughs> you elect her, you get a duchess in the White House, and the first first gentleman would be a prince. Talk about classing up the joint. <laughs> we could even go a little further, and we could rip up the Declaration of Independence and ask Her Majesty the Queen if she'd be willing to take us back. Think okay, think about it. Okay, think about it. Think about it. <laughs> bear with me. Bear with me. Both countries will get something out of the deal. Uh, the United Kingdom would get uh, an upgrade over the European Union after Brexit, uh, and the United States would get a universally respected head of state that I can guarantee you has never been pissed on by a Russian prostitute. They get a a national health care service. They get proper hot tea instead of the iced crap they serve in the southern United States. And most importantly, decent fish and chips. So I'm going to start a campaign. Party like it's 1775. Bring back the letter U. Bowler hats, not MAGA hats. 
Mm-hmm. What do we want? Recolonization. When do we mm-hmm. want it? Now. <laughs> and the perfect slogan for the bumper sticker. Elizabeth 2020. Make America Great Britain again. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, folks. You have been a lovely audience, and I've been David Parsons. Cheers! Uh, woo, woo, woo.